Hello everyone. Today we are going to understand about some of the questions asked in set examination relating to the topic of elementary particles in nuclear physics. If you look at your screen, this question that you see on the screen is frequently asked in set examinations. It generally includes a nuclear reaction and we have to see whether the reaction is valid under the conservation laws of quantum number of charge, strangeness, baryon number, isotopic spin, etc. So, we are going to understand what are all these different quantum numbers and how to solve this kind of problem. This is the reaction that we saw in the problem. In this reaction, first we will check the validity of the reaction for charge. So, pi positive, it would of course have positive 1 charge. As we know, neutron is neutral, charge would be 0. K0 also charge would be 0. And for proton, po proton is of course positive 1 charge since it is positively charged. So, for this reaction we see, on the LHS we have positive 1 charge and on the RHS we have positive 1 charge. Since equal charges on both the sides, we say this reaction is valid under the conservation of charge. The next thing we are going to understand is all the different quantum numbers relating to the nuclear particles. These are all the quantum numbers for elementary particles. We have got isospin, third component of isospin, baryon number, lepton number, spin, charge and strangeness. In today's video, we are going to understand about isospin and third component of isospin and rest of the other quantum numbers we are going to cover in the next video. But before we move on to, uh, towards today's topic, I expect you to note the chart that we see on the screen. This is a complete classification of all the elementary particles in nuclear physics. Note the whole chart down in your notebook by pausing the video. So once you have noted down the chart, let's move on towards today's topic that is isotopic spin or isospin. So we can derive isospin for all the elementary particles that you saw in previous chart. The formula for isospin is given by 2i plus 1. What does this formula mean? Here m means multiplicity. What is multiplicity? If you just go back to the chart that you jotted down, if you look at the pi on section of the chart, we see that pi mesons are pi ons or totally 3 in number. So for pi ons, the m that is multiplicity would be 3. Now if you put m equal to 3 in your equation for iso, uh, isospin, we get m equal to 3. So 3 equal to 2i plus 1. So, writing this equation in the form of i, we get 3 minus 1 upon 2 equals 1. What does this mean? It means that pi plus, pi naught and pi minus. All three of them have isospin of the value 1. So, we can just feed in this value of i in the chart. Just make a chart for different particles and their isospin. So, if this is the chart, we get for pi ons, pi plus, pi naught and pi minus, isospin is 1, 1 and 1 respectively. Now let's find out what is the third component of isospin for these three pi ions. The equation for third component of isospin is given by 2i plus 1. So if we put i in the value, we got i equal to 1 in the previous uh, step. So i3 would become 2, uh, 2 into 1 plus 1 that is equal to 3. So that means that i3 has total of 3 values. These three values are, fr are from plus i to minus i. So i3 values we get plus 1, 0 and minus 1. What this means is plus 1 is the value of i3 for pi plus, 0 for pi naught and minus 1 for pi minus. Note the value of i3 that is third component of isospin for pi plus, pi naught and pi minus. The next, the next particle that we see are Kions. If you look at the distinguish uh, the classification of elementary particles, these are the K mesons or kions. We say uh, don't confuse the, these to be uh, having multiplicity four. If you look at these, these are sets of twos. So if you look at K mesons or kions, K plus and K naught form one set, and K dash naught and K minus form another set. 
So k plus and k naught have multiplicity m equal to 2. Similarly, k naught and k plus have multiplicity m equal to 2. Again, we solve for this, we can find the value of isospin. So for kions, we just distribute the two sets, we put m equal to 2. If we put m equal to 2 in the equation for I, isospin, we get 2 equal to 2i plus 1. So i would be equal to 2 minus 1 upon 2. So i would be equal to half. What does this mean? That k plus and k naught both have the value of isospin to be half. Similarly, for k naught, k dash naught and k minus m equal to 2, we again get i equal to half. So even k dash naught and k minus have isospin half. Now let's find out the third component of isospin. We know the formula for the third component of isospin to be i3 equal to 2i plus 1. Put the value of i as half, we get i3 equal to 2. That is i3, for i3 we have got two values, plus half and minus half. So k plus would have i3 value plus half and k naught would have i3 value minus half. Similarly for k dash naught and k minus, i3 for k dash naught would be plus half and k minus would have i3 value minus half. Put all these values in the chart that you are preparing for the values of i3 and isospin. Putting in the values we get these are all the values for isospin i and i3 component for k -obs. The next particle that we see in our chart is of course neta meson. Let's find what is the isospin for neta mesons. If you look at your chart of elementary particles, we see that neta meson is singular. It so it has m equal to 1. Multiplicity is equal to 1. Since we have equation for isospin m equal to 2i plus 1, we just put the value of m equal to 1. We get 1 equal to 2i plus 1. By shifting this 1 to LHS, we get 1 minus 1 equals 0. So i becomes 0. Since i is equal to c is 0, consecutively i3 would also be 0. We put the value of n mesons or neta mesons, isospin has the value 0 as well as third component of isospin also has value 0. The next particle that we will find the isospin for is leptons but understand that leptons do not have an isospin. Isospin for all the leptons would be of course 0 since they are singular particles E minus, mu minus, tau minus all of them would have isospin 0. So we would not find any kind of isospin for leptons. So let's move on towards nucleons. So look at the next particles that is nucleons, proton and neutron. Of course these are 2 in number if you look at the charge they form a set. So m equal to 2 multiplicity would be 2. So if we put m equal to 2 in the equation of m equal to 2i plus 1, we get 2 into 2i plus 1. Therefore i would be equal to 2 minus 1 upon 2 that is equal to 1 upon 2. What this, the, what this means is i for p would be 1 half as well as for n isospin would also be 1 half. Now let's find the third component of isospin. i3 of course we know is given by number of third components i3 is given by formula 2i plus 1. Putting the value of i to be half we get 2 into half plus 1. This gives us 1 plus 1, 2. So, we have got two numbers of isospin I3, uh, third components of isospins. These are, of course, revolving around these, uh, the value of I. So, I3 has values minus half and plus half. So, if we assign the values of I3 to our P and N, we get I3 for P to be plus half and I3 for N is minus half. Put these values in the chart that you have been preparing for isospin and I3 and that's all for today. So from the chart, I found out the values of isospin I and I3 for pions, kaons, neta mesons, leptons and nucleons. So homework for today would be finding out the i and i3 values for baryons. So you are going to find out the value of i for lambda, 
sigma hyperons, xi hyperons and omega hyperons. A little hint would be, since lambda is singular in number, it can be solved in similar in similar fashion to neta mesons, since its multiplicity would be 1. And sigma, me, uh, sigma hyperons would have multiplicity m equal to 3. Just put the value of m equal to 3 and find the value of i and consecutively the value of i3. In similar fashion, you can find all the values of i and i3 for the remaining particles and just fill the columns that you have been making, the chart that you have been making for i and i3 for different elementary particles. That's all for today and best of luck for your net set examinations.